Hello and welcome to another episode of Pony 411. This is episode 247 for the week of December 23rd. I am Alcatraz and joining me is Nemesis, like normal. Ba weep grana weep ninny bong. Universal greeting. Yeah. Yep. So yes, December 23rd. This is the last episode of, of the year. Yeah. Yes. Christmas is upon us, or if we want to keep in our theme, hearth swarming is upon us. Yeah. Hearth swarming is here once again. So yes, we have yet another episode for you. But yeah, before we get to that, this week, <laughs> this last couple of weeks, holy crap. <laughs> this has been quite... Fun times. Quite the couple of weeks, uh, especially around here. We had a tornado. Tornado. We had a freaking tornado Literally in 20 Washington miles State. away. That doesn't happen. Not normally. Not not usually. Yeah, having an EF2 drop down 20 miles away from us, that's, that, that was kind of a thing. I've been busy as heck. 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 I'm not going to use HE double hockey sticks on Hell. here. <laughs> But heck, with work stuff has been, yeah, I, I, that's been tough, but I, the, the big part is over. Well, yeah, anyway, we do have another episode, like I mentioned. We got a little bit of news, not actually a huge amount this time, surprisingly for two weeks, but we do have a little bit of news. We've got a handful of things to talk about. We've got two comics, we've got three shorts, and a full-length discussion to get to. And then at the end of it, we've got a little bit of fan content as well. So, let's get into this, starting with the news. If you would like to follow along, you can find all of our show notes at pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. Remember, that's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. So go there, click the link for this episode, and let's get to this. In convention news, BronyCon has announced vendor applications are now open. Everfree Northwest has announced Tony Fleece and Brenda Hickey, as well as panel applications being opened. And Winnie Cine Pony Con is on for 2019. It'll be April 5th through 7th at the Hyatt Regency in Schaumburg, Illinois. Registration, as well as all of the applications, are also now open, just all at once. Uh, so if you want to do any of that stuff, get to it. They've also announced this season pass thing that they're calling it, because the people who run... Winnie City are also people who run Ciderfest and MLP MSP. It's all the same group. And they say if you buy a badge for Winnie City and MLP MSP, you can get 30% off registration for Ciderfest. DLC. Yeah. Although it, it, it's interesting how the badge works. So if you buy, like, you get 30% off for the lowest common badge you buy. So if you buy, like, a sponsor badge for one and a regular badge... For the other, you get thirty percent off of a regular badge for the well, for yeah, the third one. It makes sense. But if you buy like two sponsors, you get thirty percent off a sponsor badge for the third. But oh, that only counts for pre-registering and um weekend, full weekend badges. The at the door and the single days don't count. There's all all the details are on their website. So if you're interested, go check that out. In merchandise news, GameLoft has released the Heart Swarming update for their MLP game. Bunch of stuff is included in that, including the reindeer I dash. I saw a deer today. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, including reindeer dash and a whole bunch of other things, as per usual for their updates. Did Rainbow Dash run over Grandma? Probably. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> when you're going that that fast, it's hard to see where you're going. What hard a to jerk. <laughs> I don't know, maybe Grandma deserved it. Maybe, maybe Dash grandma's, slow down. Well, maybe Grandma's just racist. <laughs> Amazon Canada has images for the Series 3 of the Cutie Mark Crew blind bags, although they were listed on the Season 4 page, so there's a slight mess up there. Series 4. Yes, the Series 4 ba- page has the Series 3 images. But yes, now you can see what they are. And images for a whole bunch of upcoming figures and stuff have appeared. I'm not going to go through them all. There's a link you can click if you want all of them. But they include stuff like the the Rainbow Wing Twilight Sparkle. We already had images of that. Yeah, one. we already have that one. But there's that. The big one was uh, at the top was uh, the pony yeah, doll the, set. The, yeah, the it's like, girls, oh, just brushables. Okay. They, they include the pony and the brushable doll. Oh, and the uh, new minis. 
Yes, those as well. The the what do they call them? The Fashion Squad mini dolls. Yeah, they're the new minis. Yep. And they have less articulation. Yep. So no, a whole they, bunch uh, of stuff. I see they're now missing knees and elbows, which is kind of sad. And they're also Aww. smaller, only three inches tall. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the old ones are like five or six inches. Something like that. Yeah. They only come up, they only come up to the necks of the old ones. So kind of short. But so what? But now they have swappable clothes. Ooh. Yeah. Oddly enough, a two-pack of Dash and Sunset. Yeah, it's weird. People do ship those too. It's not very common, but they no. do. It's, it's an interesting ship. Not even talking about shipping, but okay. I know. Well, they, they're, <laughs> they're packed together, so I guess that's shipped together. It's just uh, a different kind of shipping. Everything comes around to shipping. The You've been in this fandom long enough. What? The other one's Rarity and Pinky. Also a rare pair. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're a thing, so check that out if you're interested. The Haunting of Equestria, which is an adventure for the Tales of Equestria tabletop RPG, is now available for pre-order on Amazon, or you can just get it directly from Riverhorse. Like you now. can just get it, not even pre-order. Like now. Yep. Straight from the horse's mouth. Which I'm not sure how much shipping costs would be because that's coming from Europe. Yep. Hasbro has partnered with Imagine Hotels and Resorts to build a Hasbro-themed indoor water park and resort. No details on when or where, but that may be interesting. It's going to apparently include, like, the whole gambit of franchises, including ponies and Transformers and all that stuff. Keep an ear out for further details on that. That might... That would be interesting if they, you know, have, like, a, a fan convention at the MLP Resort. <laughs> I wonder how that would work. That would be weird. That would be really weird. <laughs> they might put a kibosh on that though because that'd be kind of potentially uh -oh. conf conflicting maybe i don't know i don't know how that would work law is hard <laughs> well, yes <laughs> copyright law is weird into comic news hasbro is releasing a comic anthology called synergy a hasbro creators showcase in celebration of women's history month yeah it's like I said, it's an anthology of a whole bunch of different works including just a bunch of different covers mm -hmm. comic covers and new content entirely by the women creators in Hasbro. So, sounds pretty cool, but it's not just Pony. It's got Pony and it's got other things in it as well. Yep. yep. It's Transformer stuff because yep. they've kind of made a lot of strides with uh, female creators working on Transformer stuff. Because it's <laughs> been a boys' too. club for a long time. Yep. Boys' club on. Both and of course, sides of fans I've seen and some people, creators. of course, whining because, of course, they, oh, how no. dare you focus on female characters and stuff? Yes. Get over it. Bunch of Mary Sues, they claim. No. <laughs> really? Yep. Lots of that. Yeah. And the March solicitations are out, and that means synopses. And this one, the new one we got, is the French Miss Magic issue number 76. Its synopsis is, The search for the missing stars of the Andalusian constellation continues. With Pinkie Pie, Big Mac, Zakora, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders on the case, this expedition's in the bag. Right? Things aren't always what they seem in this thrilling new adventure featuring your favorite ponies and Equestria's biggest villain yet, Cosmos. Yeah. Ooh. That one's on its way. Well, so that's, t that's the same month that um, that Synergy thing will come out. Yep. Yeah, the Synergy thing is also in the solicitation as well, but we have another link for that one. Uh, it also has volume 16 of the trade paperback, and that's including issues 69 through 73. Nice. Which we already know about because it's just inclusion of old ones. So yes, that's also in there. And that's it. That's all the news. That's all we've got. <laughs> like I said, not a huge amount of news to go through. Nope. That does mean we can move on to our discussion topics, and we have two comics two. we're going to start out with. So go ahead and start with whichever one you want to start with. It came out over the last few weeks. I'm going to go in order of release. So we're going to start with uh, Nightmare Nights number three. Once again, written by Jeremy Whitley with art by Tony Fleece and colors by Heather Breckle. In which they have now infiltrated the little casino resort thing of uh, heiresses. <laughs> for villains. Yes. And, well, they have to get in and actually steal the thing. So they have to do plans and distractions. <laughs> do and, plans. Yeah, and distractions and whatnot. And Let's uh, do go the Varying deed. degrees of success, but not on the well, successful side of things, usually, actually. <laughs> varying degrees of success is not as much as they wanted. Yeah. It's, it's very... Uh, so it's still building. 
I guess. building though. We're we're out of the setup stage or into the things execution are execution and building up. Yes. Also, oh, Trixie's uh, ego still kind of a thing. Uh, yes. <laughs> Trixie. Just want to some smack interesting her. little things within this uh, issue too, including oh hey look there's Pony Gloriosa Daisy, right there just okay sure because she was a villain once I guess you just got to do one bad thing you're just a villain forever or something <laughs> I don't know I don't know how this works they keep even, they keep adding random minor villains and stuff it's like they weren't really that bad except they're they're from alternate universes so then maybe they were worse than those ones yeah but they also Diamond Dogs <laughs> came back haven't seen them in a while yeah. That's the neat things. That's the neat little things in here. It's some nice artwork, and you got some fun stuff going on. It's just a heist gone wrong. <laughs> and, yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to wrap up, because there's two more issues of this. They're at the midpoint. Yep. It's pretty interesting. Just, again, I still can't really say <laughs> whether or not it's any good until the end. Can't really say anything other that one not until I've got the full story. Yeah. You can say, yeah, that individual is kind of nice if you've been kept keeping up, but as a standalone, no, don't do that. <laughs> That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work as a standalone. Yeah, you, you don't buy the middle comic of a series and that's it. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just, it's still interesting at this point. I'm just, I still have high hopes for the whole story at this, at this point. Just hoping it doesn't crash and burn like a lot of yep. these things. Like, like some of them did. And anyway, the next one is uh, Friendship is Magic number 73. Uh, standalone, this one, actually, and it's written by Tom Zaylor with art by Tony Cusisto and colors by Heather Beckel. I believe that's pencils? Or? I believe that's pencils. Yeah. Seems right. The art seems to match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, well, Fluttershy's, you know, in her animal sanctuary and taking care of a timber wolf and all that stuff, and then all of a sudden she starts acting weird. She starts acting more animal-like in many ways. And it starts causing weird little problems and whatnot. The main six are worried, and they have to go figure out what's going on with Fluttershy. So it's that's uh that's the gist of it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's a kind of all right one shot. I think a lot of it comes down to like what makes it more worth it is a lot of the artwork and stuff of Fluttershy acting like animals and stuff. Kind of visually very interesting. But the actual story itself is kind of it's all right. It's all right, yeah. yeah it's just kind of like, oh, we've seen this sort of nonsense before. It feels like it's just kind of more, oh, look, this random thing from the past or whatever. Yeah. I do like this one bit where it's just like, <laughs> what's more likely? Is that she's just tired and acting strange or she's under the influence of some weird magical spell and everyone just looks at Twilight like, really? Come on. Right. Magical right. spell. That's more like. <laughs> also, Trixie's here because. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. Also, Trixie there. is here. Trixie. <laughs> <laughs> And also Trixie. Why? And also Trixie is there, just, just there. She's just there, and then <laughs> and then not, and then she's not. And it's, it's just, confusing. Okay. Like, why even here? Yeah, it's just kind of like, what? Why are you here? But, <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, okay. <laughs> it, it's strange. I mean, it's, it's not really strange. Bad, but it's just kind of why? odd. You just this just she kind is. of appears out of nowhere, and that's then okay. She has no purpose except to make two snarky lines. She literally has two lines of dialogue. That's it. <laughs> and then she's gone. She's Yeah, she said two lines of dialogue, she's on two pages, and then she's gone. <laughs> That's it. I That's don't know it. what's up with that. I don't know. Maybe she just happened to be in the area. Maybe she, yeah, any, other, would... any other funny background character could have been put there, but I guess Trixie works as a background character, too. Hmm. I mean, why not? Or it's what's interesting, it's because you got Twilight, Applejack, Pinky... Why not Dash or Rarity in this group? <laughs> They're not in this initial group. I don't know. It's just strange. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they plan on having Trixie somewhere else in another comic. So they're not even sequential, so that doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, this comic's a standalone, too, so it's like... Yeah. It's just I don't a strange know. thing. But anyway, I, it's kind of... I mean, yes, I know I'm kind of getting a little hung up on it, but... <laughs> yeah, it's... It's out to me real bad. <laughs> it's like, what in the world?! But yeah. Otherwise, it's just you got a lot of fun art in it and stuff, and yeah, a serviceable story that works and it's kind of inter pretty entertaining. Just you know, nothing like amazing, and kind of uses a lot of the same stuff the show and whatnot has used before. I mean, used it in a new way, but still like the same sort of general like, oh, that's what's going on. Yeah. So it's not bad. It's it it stands up on its own, just not it's fun and hollering, but it's fine. It's fun and it's worth fun. I think picking up. Yeah, especially if you like like seeing silly things. Yeah. 
Anyway, that is the comics, so that moves on to the next little bit that we're going to talk about, and that is the Hearth Swarming shorts that popped up shortly after we mentioned that they were a thing on the last episode. So yes, we are actually going to talk about those. Now, the first of the three shorts is called Triple Pony Dare Ya, in which Applejack and Rainbow Dash are having a dare contest. And they go through various different dares until Pinky solves it by... You know, cheating. Ba- by basically <laughs> cheating, yes. I, that, that's yeah. the first one. <laughs> it's kind of like a miniature uh, Iron Pony competition. Yep. Triple dog dare, yeah. I was surprised we didn't have any lick this candy cane. Lick this po- metal pole. Yep, lick the metal pole. Yeah, because like, uh, you got the like, like Daring Rainbow Dash to fly slower than Apple Molasses. <laughs> to the point where she almost falls out of the sky because you can't actually fly that slow and maintain lift. Except that she hovers all the time. Uh, but you know, she was flapping her wings slowly. With hovering, she's flapping her wings at a yeah. pretty good pace. This is happening. Yeah. yeah. You and can't. Then, yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. Oh, daring Rainbow Dash to stand in line. <laughs> with <laughs> that's the opener's one. Patience. Yep. <laughs> and then, yeah. So you bite her wing and go red in the face. Although then, I did have that one scene when she did run, run forward and. Wagging her tail like a dog. And then running towards the front of the line because, well, you know, it's, forget all these other people. She's impatient. <laughs> yeah. And what was Applejack it? bucking. One. Once. <laughs> <laughs> Just one little tap. Yeah. I, remind I did it. <laughs> the Donkey Kong meme. <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> yeah. All these different dares. And then Pinky, I dare you to not dare anymore. No, no, I win then. What? And there we go, the end. Listen here. <laughs> yeah, it was it was interesting. It was it was kind of fun. Really short, and not much to it. They're all about three minutes long. Yeah. They'll have a really long break between the end of the episode and the beginning of the credits. It's kind of weird. Anyway, the second one is called The Great Escape Room. In which Pinky turned Applejack's barn into an escape room, and all six of them tried to solve it because Pinky can just apparently just make herself forget things. Sometimes I wish I had that ability. You just need a rock. <laughs> and she would be good at finding rocks. Yes. Apparently, Pinky doesn't really know how to make an escape room or what the point is. No. Yeah. But hey, I guess they had she, fun. Uh... Possibly caused some uh, trauma. Yeah. For Fluttershy, at the very least. Yes. Fluttershy start crying at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something really bad is going to happen. Oh, no. There comes a the point, so you know what? Forget this. Teleport out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just get out. Just get out. Yeah, because it also just starts off real dark and stuff. And it's also kind of a nice reference, because like, you know that we're good at escape rooms now. Yeah, it's because of, of the one episode that we... The, the good part of a really bad episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's also just Twilight swimming across the floor. Swimming across the Doing the floor. backstroke. <laughs> yep. Individually counting uh, hay. <laughs> Rarity individually counting the hay. It's the straw. Uh, yeah, it's uh, all all sorts of ridiculous things. How is this supposed to help us? It's not how. Guess what? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. So yeah, that was a thing. And then just gummy. What? And then just gummy. Yeah, and then just gummy. Out of a gigantic present, which rose out of the hay. How did you do that? You know what? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> anyway, the third and final short. It's called Mystery Voice. They're at the school. They're trying to teach, and the announcer keeps interrupting them. Stupid announcer. Rarity, Dash, and Fluttershy go to confront the announcer to say, hey, stop. And it's Applejack. Oh. Oh, okay. Apparently Applejack does voices. Who knew? New gross voice actors. Yeah. Gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that one was kind of interesting. It was really weird watching Applejack talk and having all those different voices. (laughs) It's like, this is weird. (laughs) All those weird voices. Yeah. And they had uh, uh, the different voice actors doing different voices. It wasn't just Ashley doing all the different voices. It would have been funny, though. Making an actual voice actor joke. (laughs) A little bit of fourth wall breakage, but they didn't. 
but it was still kind of interesting and fun. Mm. Well, just weird. Yeah, that one's kind of the I think the weakest of the three, honestly, just because it's a little. Eh. It, it's probably the most threadbare, I guess, of the three. Not as much going not exactly on. Exactly. Have a lot. of them have a lot of assumptions in the first place. Yeah, all of them are threadbare. It's just that one is more so than the rest. And uh, the one thing I forgot to mention for the first one, I did like that. That Granny Smith counting her. Oh, yeah. sh- money. Oh, and then that's, it's, a oh, that's, that's a button. <laughs> that's a button. That's a button. Hurry up! Everyone else needs to buy stuff too. We're all gonna be your age by the time you're done. <laughs> and yet, Granny will still be there. <laughs> the uh, Granny, the Undying. <laughs> oh, fun! I should have been dead five years ago. <laughs> Bring back friendship as witchcraft, one way or another. But yeah, that's all the shorts. Only three of them. Super They're short. Fun. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun. Just again, <laughs> like all these shorts, not really a lot to talk about. Yeah, not a lot to talk about. Not much you can do in three minutes. Well, it was nice at the end of the last one, Applejack telling the story of Tarthorming. Yep. Again, so oh yeah, chance they're putting in all that. Yep, yep. They did a play on that. All right, I guess that brings us to our our final main discussion. We're gonna talk about another season one episode. <gasps> Yeah, we've been doing that, so we're going to talk about Dragon Shy this time. So, quick synopsis. There's smoke. Came from a dragon. Main six have to go kick the dragon out. They do so. With the, a couple problems in the middle. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> These early episodes are fairly simple. Yeah, and an early episode, it definitely is. It was like, what, six or seven? Yeah, it was number seven. Yeah, definitely first half. Yeah, number seven. This episode, it was interesting. It, it was, Even back then, it kind of flowed a little bit different. A little bit. Definitely interesting looking back on that. And it is the very first Fluttershy learns, tries, has to learn to be assertive. First kind of, of many. <laughs> first of many episodes, but it is... Number one. <laughs> oh look, it's Dragon Shy again. <laughs> yep, that's always what the what the the meme basically. Hey look. So it it is fairly simple in like most of the season one episodes were. That not a huge amount of other extra things were going on. But yeah, just Fluttershy is afraid of everything. It was really heavy handed. <laughs> That's one of the things no. I'm noticing. A lot of these early episodes are pretty heavy-handed in what they're showing. Yeah, and remember, this is also when they're doing the inter- educational informative branding. Yeah, stuff, that too. that too. But I mean, just just not just the the educational side of things. Just I'm not I'm talking about. I'm get... mean because that was the whole thing was it was really aimed at like four year olds initially. Yeah, they kind of bumped up their target demo a little bit later, but yeah, they initially did. it was aiming like four and five year olds. Yeah, and that's you why can it's so heavy handed. It's very heavy handed and blatant. Yeah. No, kind of over the top and with it subtly not allowed because it goes right over kids' heads. Yeah, because they don't have fast reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, definitely see the differences in some of the characters. It's kind of interesting that the, the montage sequence. Uh, that's one that I'm remembering. Not really montage. Is well, not really. The, just when everyone's. Getting together and they do the like the the poses. Yeah, that that whole sequence didn't do that again. It's like I'm trying to remember what it what, what it reminds me of. There's uh, different other like shows and movies have done. Makes me think of Borderlands. Well, yeah, Borderlands did that too, but it's sort of like the the I don't want to say superhero kind of a thing, but they kind of do that for other those, those kind of things. We're about to you know, start an adventure and they introduce the different characters. Almost like a comic book thing. That's what it is. It's like comic books. It's kind of neat seeing that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me was kind of the just the small scale of this, weirdly enough. Because, um, well, sort of in small scale, it kind of seems a bit of a paradox initially. But uh, what happens is... It was, because the whole thing is like the dragon's like it's threatening Equestria just by being in a mountain. Yeah, not, not Ponyville. Equestria. All Equestria. Equestria is threatened by one dragon snapping in a mountain, which is kind of weird. That it would imply Equestria itself is quite small. Yeah. And then later episodes kind of get rid of that idea. It's like no, Equestria is actually quite large. It is quite large. It's a country. 
It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a whole nation. It's big. So Multiple it's kind of strange in that in of itself that is, that's a thing. And then later episodes also like the dragons migrate across the cluster and everything too. So I was like, mm. yes, we have the badlands down south where all the dragons are, kind of mm-hmm. thing. And Although so, that it's it's weird because like what was the episode the dragon quest? What yeah, that was yep. the one where they had the dragon migration and stuff and introduced a whole bunch of other dragons. So it's kind of interesting that this one feels so small in scale because of that. And then so it's like it's feared very feels very much like early on when some like lore stuff was still in flux yep that's definitely what it feels like so it, it's kind of interesting in you know, itself just yeah and also this mountain is like just a just, spire out of the it, ground yeah it, it's a spire more than a, a mountain Although, it is a tall thing it is we're gonna bring back my friendship with witchcraft yeah it is a bit interesting that celestia would give them the mission of evicting a dragon yeah it's <laughs> just like a bunch of landlords. This isn't a friendship problem. <laughs> it's just... Get them out. Yeah. They're behind on their rent. Get them out whatever whatever means necessary. Yeah. Gotta rent that cave out man, next week. <laughs> uh... I thought the solution just plug the cave up. The problem will solve itself eventually, probably. Yeah, except then you have a pissed off dragon who breaks through the top of the mountain. Well, he'll leave. Without <laughs> <laughs> taking the well, nearby he's towns. Like, I don't know what happened. It's just, it's just, I don't know, just the, the collapse, doesn't, I guess. Doesn't. <laughs> it's an avalanche. It collapsed. <laughs> oh, itself. Uh, it's like pissing off smog. Mm. Oh, here we go. It destroys everything on his way out. It's fine. Gotta point him in the right smog. direction. Smog. Gotta point him in the right direction. <laughs> uh it's uh it's uh that's one of the things it's just uh yeah it's initial yeah the initial fluttershy needs to be a served episode and her being they really amped up how just terrified she is of everything yes yeah, so that's <laughs> one of the things really i was saying about channel. everything being heavy-handed yeah. everything is over the top really to really push it yeah uh the one thing i didn't like was of course the goat noises <laughs> the goat noises falling over blocked up yep <laughs> Yep. It's so like when they climb the mountain, it's just they're just walking up almost a vertical <laughs> just yeah. Bethesda horse, basically. Yeah. Equestria is in, in uh Tamriel confirmed. Yep. It's literally Skyrim. <laughs> Those springing ponies into Skyrim mods fighting are dragons that far off. <laughs> fighting dragons, going with mountains, fight, fighting dragons, all that stuff. Yep. It's the Skyrim episode. Before Just, Skyrim even came out. Yes. Todd Howard looked at this. And that's where he you got his Todd idea. Coward? <laughs> Todd Howard. Todd Coward? Todd Coward. Uh, Fallout 76 is super broken. <laughs> it's so broken. <laughs> they interest you in 500 atoms. In this trying time. <laughs> yes. Oh, apparently, the other thing, they just announced they were going to give people who bought Fallout 76, Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics for free. <laughs> that wasn't even their game. Shh. Uh, That's not relevant. It's <laughs> so off topic. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but, uh, yeah, the other thing was, was interesting is, like, the early personnel is like rarity just so fully just on board just on board with just straight up stealing yeah just she don't care she just want to take it all so generous she just wants to take stuff it's <laughs> like not, i just want to take whoa, the treasure i forgot just just like how bad that looked yeah and i'll tell you why it's just really no nonsense for a large chunk of the episode too yep which kind of makes sense that this is kind of a serious thing so it's like once things get serious why it's just Yep, we're just locked on. We're doing this and this doesn't is serious time and doesn't no notice serious face. <laughs> yes, and she doesn't notice. Well, no one really knows what Fluttershy is doing because no one really notices Fluttershy. No one can hear. Her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they also be getting this to try and tell everyone. Hey, listen, uh, uh, dragon uh, or not dragon? Smoke, fire, smoke, problem, fire, problem. No one listens, and then Twilight, listen up. <laughs> uh, and also the weird thing of like the the record. It's just funny. The record is like only in the three hundreds. <laughs> For the ball bouncing thing. Oh, yeah. Because at the end, it's like only five ways. It's like 340. It's like, really? That's it? That's it? Ball That's bouncing? It. That's it? 
Also, I remember me speaking of Dash, um, there's a bit that the when the avalanche happened and they have the rocks falling down, it's kind of weird. You know, she's supposed to be the speedster and stuff. And you got this thing where it's like she's you know dodging the rocks and it's just there's like no weight to it. The animation, it's yeah, like, it's like they didn't really know how to convey speed and stuff quite yet. Yeah, they're trying to figure that way. That whole sequence was weird because the path they're walking on suddenly got really super big. Yeah. <laughs> it was super narrow and then suddenly was really wide. It's fine. So yeah, there was there was some interesting and bits the, of animation. Of course, the hop, and skip, there. and the jump. Yep, the hop, which, skip, uh, and the jump. Which, <laughs> which was not really a jump. You didn't even have jump. to jump. You could have just stepped. <laughs> you just stepped over Fluttershy. Oh. But they did bring that one back. Of course, using later. camera camera angles to make sure we didn't see that. Yep, never showed both sides of it until the very end. Mm-hmm. The other interesting thing was like Fluttershy's wings locking up out of fear. Yep, it's like, huh? That's come back a few times. If I remember a correctly, times. I think it might have come back a couple times. But I just oh, know oh. this is this is just a huh reaction. Just yep. Well, that's like annoying goats. and convenient for the sake of the story moving forward, yeah. I guess. Or not moving forward. Yeah. And then Applejack is literally dragging Fluttershy. He's just... And that's the only thing she did. Yep. <laughs> she Apple never went in to confront the dragon nope. herself. And once again, her thing was apples. Apples. <laughs> <laughs> well, is her brain she bags? Was, yeah. Apple <laughs> ciders, juice, or whatever. She was also the, the uh, firearms, basically. Right. In case things were go apples. bad. <laughs> kicking apples as weapons. Ooh, using them as projectiles. I'm pretty sure that dragon's going to be terrified of that. I don't know. She can, she can kick an apple pretty hard. Gotta aim for the eyes. <laughs> Go for the eyes. <laughs> Why is it always the eyes? <laughs> uh, don't know what the heck Pinky tried to do. Pinky. Pinky. Pinky being Pinky. Well, they were rarity playing, how what was it, 74 games or something like tic-tac-toe? Oh, it was a... Uh, it was 30-something in a yeah, row, because then she's like, best, best of 71, or yeah, something like, like that. Mm. How do you lose tic-tac-toe that many times in a row? It's really easy. At least force a stalemate. Yes, that's the whole point about tic Have you seen war games? Yeah. <laughs> Once you know how to play, you can't win. No one can win. It's always a cat's game. Yep. Well, Gary must just be really bad at tic-tac-toe. Yeah, that reminds me. There was a puzzle in one of the Sam and Max games where you had to try to lose a tic tac toe, and the AI is so incompetent that it's really difficult to lose. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's a, it's it's all this stuff, and then of course you got the just the general climb, all that stuff, and Dash is just like, come on. That's the other thing I remember. Never mind with Dash. The way she acts about Fluttershy really kind of defies later stuff of they knew each other growing up. Yes. Because yes, that with the, is um, one thing. Her, her attitude. That pony. She then call her Fluttershy. She says that pony and stuff. She kind of distances, kind of like Fluttershy is at a distance. Like she doesn't really know her still that well. Because at this point, they didn't interact a whole lot yet in the show. Yeah. Dash and Fluttershy. Well, she didn't really call her that pony that many times. It was no, just particular, like, like that ponies are scared of her own shadow. Not Fluttershy scared of her own shadow. That pony, like that's yeah, I think that was weird... the only time though, because every other. Oh, no, but I'm just like, saying that's a weird. Fluttershy? If if they grew up together, she wouldn't have said that pony or whatever. Like that. yeah, the way, was that was that inflection. Yeah, that one that was interesting. If they were because that's that's a kind of a that's a distancing thing. That's a that's yeah. A, it I is. don't really know them, or don't want to. Yeah. One so of those it's, it's interesting that that's the case. So it it's is. Like a, again, that's kind of the stuff was still in flux idea thing. Yeah. Because it was much late, much later in the season was the whole Dash and Fluttershy at least knew each other back in school. At least yeah, it wasn't other. even that far la- later. It was like episode 17. Yeah, like Sonic Rain later. Boom. Yeah, I was like, that's a good 10 episodes later. That's the second well, half yes. of the season. Yeah. So it was kind of later, quite a bit later. Yeah, it was still within the season. Then they yeah. really established like I said, that. season one later in season one. Yeah, a it lot just, of the characters changed. There was a lot of a lot of changing. This is also when Rarity still had her like. There's a slightly different inflections and stuff in her voice than she does now in the show. And yeah. same with Applejack. Applejack has a was very different. Like she had a much more of a I guess softer accent in a way. Yeah, than she does later, where they just really lean into the Texas accent. So it's it's kind of interesting in that regard, just uh, how this one particularly, just yeah, just the really early stuff, how different it is in some ways. 
Also, you got Spike taking care of. Yes, the Spike animals. taking care of the animals, which we saw a few seasons later, and we wish we did the pets. <laughs> Well, that one wasn't so bad. Well, that one was Spike at Your Service later yeah, Spike on? Spike at Your Service is the bad one. That was with, you know, Debt to Applejack. Uh, no, yeah, Spike was Service. Just for Sidekicks. It was just for Sidekicks, side yeah. That was the weird one. With the, oh, look, it's, it's the happens the same time as the other episode, which we're going to see. Yeah, that was just... But then also, this is the episode that uh, established Angel's an awful, awful Angel's bunny. a jerk. Angel's a horrible bunny. Yes, Angel is a jerk. It also started a whole bunch of things, like throwing things at Fluttershy's head. Yes. That was a thing. Clock on the head. Bounce a carrot off the back of her head. This is fine. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a thing, a lot of this, about this uh, episode. It's just like, hmm. That's weird. That's Go, weird. Yeah, in retrospect, that's weird. It doesn't that really is line weird. up with stuff later, does it? We accepted that. We just kind that of went with it. odd. Because we didn't have anything it else. Yeah. That, that's just what it was. That's how things were. And yeah. It's it's just kind of interesting in some ways. Also, oh, yeah, this was also Lyra sitting on the bench. Oh, yes. Lyra sitting on the bench. Saw that. Yep. The episode where Lyra sits like a human. <gasps> and started a whole dumb thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> that has never stopped. <laughs> so many things. It's it's weird look, looking back at these old episodes and wa- and seeing the origins of so much now. Mm-hmm. Just remembering that. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, I, I didn't watch these until after the entire season was done. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's still pretty fun to watch. Just, it uh, is. It is still pretty fun to watch. Really basic. Yeah. You just gotta you gotta change your expectations. You have I to think, remember what things were. And some of the things are just uh, I think you laugh more because of not necessarily what was said or anything, but because of what it reminds you of. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's a lot of nostalgia going back. Some of it just because it's it. like oh, it's just, you just all I can think is it, it, it is a tall thing. It, it, <laughs> it's not it is a mountain. To our it is a tall. Th- it's not a mountain. It's a tall, tall thing. thing. <laughs> God, friendship was witchcrafted so much for the original. <laughs> Yeah, the original yeah, season. That's what it is. It's like I'm not laughing at it as a mountain. I'm laughing at that. The, I'm the laughing at the tall craft. thing. Because <laughs> it reminds you of it. Yeah. yeah. All different. Oh yeah, it reminds me. Some of the animations are also really different. Like the faces, the mouth movement and the eyes just kind of Sometimes you got some weird ones there too. Yeah, I got some really weird ones. And that's when their their eye closed. When they have their eye closed, what it looks like, they've changed that now. It looks a lot different you can see it when you compare them it's like huh yeah. those look weird so yeah you can definitely see where where they've improved since then mm-hmm. but yeah it is still kind of a fun episode to watch yeah, i guess not a huge else to say about it mm-hmm. everyone already knows it but i still think it holds up fairly well over time Woo! moving on fan content let's do this i've got two songs that I want to feature this week, and both of them are remixes and such of old fandom songs. Kind of interesting how that worked out. It's a whole nostalgia episode. First off, we have Prince Whatever's Redux of Not Letting Go. Yeah, I remember listening to the the original back when it came out. It was a uh, 2013 when the original one of these came out. So there's a lot of nostalgia that I get when listening to it again. But yeah, it's it's really good. It's a good song, and the remaster and re- re-recording that this one is. I'm pretty sure that's all it is. I don't think they much. I don't think they changed up that much. But you can definitely tell the improvements that Prince Whatever has made since then to now, and it's just a really really good song. I never listened to the original song. I don't know what, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's got some really nice guitar work on this one. Uh, there's some really good vocals, of course, and um, it's yeah, it's just a really nice, fast paced, like mid two thousand style alt rock thing. Again, and I think that's Prince Whatever's kind of thing. That, that that's his thing. So <laughs> stuck on Fuse in two thousand five. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's also kind of interesting that this song and actually the next one are about Fluttershy. <laughs> so this is really fitting. Timing. Yes, because I didn't actually pick which episode we're going to talk about until, well, yeah. yesterday. <laughs> So yes, good song. Go check it out. The next one I have is JB's I Love Everything, remixed by Faulty and Join the Hurt. Man, I love this song. I I love like the intro and the, well, the whole thing, but the, it's got this bounce to it, especially in the intro that just I can't help but bouncing along with it. It's just great. It, the original song that JB did was amazing. The remixes of the song back when it the original came out were amazing, and this remix just continues that trend. Absolutely incredible remix. About two minutes in, after the the beginning of it, it switches to this piano piece, almost orchestral-like, which was a bit unexpected. But it really, really worked. Um, also, I also really like the the like big and expansive sound that this one has. It's it's not quite as heavy on vocal clips as the original. It uses just the um, O clip instead of the the i love everything they only use it twice and not until like three minutes 30 seconds i think the original used it a little bit more but i don't think it even needs to it still works perfectly Mm -hmm. yeah the thing with the vocal clips it's like i could hear vocal clips as instruments yeah that that's a lot of it is this the whole thing was a really interesting use there just kind of the you can hear it's that's the that's the beat that's that the vocals are the beat holy crap Yes, that is that is one thing I really loved, and I wish we got more of it. It was a little bit more prevalent back in the early music fan, fandom music days, mm-hmm. and less so now. But the use of vocal clips and vocals as an instrument is really cool, and this song definitely definitely did it. It did in the original, did it here, but yeah, it is really cool. And it also is really intense. <laughs> yes, it, it's quite intense. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So go check that song out. So, fanfics. Fanfics, I do have a new one. Yes, you um, do. New feature. No updates. Just double check real quick. I just checked <laughs> last night, but... I haven't seen anything pop up on mine. Nothing. Okay, nothing. Right, but new fanfic. It's uh, A Beautiful Night by Mr. Numbers. If you remember that name, that is the person who did that one uh, steampunk Twi Luna quite a while ago. They have a new mm. fic. It's also already quite long and so far unfinished. And... Uh, probably is going to be like before where it's not going to update super often but it yep. will update but it will this is in an alternate universe where the for whatever reason elman's harmony did not work in nightmare moon one. Oh no and yeah so it's um twilight never gave up though on stopping nightmare moon but she's kind of also sh- in this one thing she's also kind of pretty much shouldered the blame for it herself in the the responsibility for getting rid of her and she's kind of working herself down to the bone and all the others have kind of moved on except for pinky except for pinky, pinky. Was stick, is sticking by her in fact there's pinky seems to have also uh gotten quite an attachment to twilight and vice versa and yeah well, say, and, and kind of the other way around yep it's a twi pi fic in this alternate universe where nightmare moon has won so yeah, you got, and then of course the main six all show up, and but, you know, it's kind of a different thing. They've kind of all started to just adapt to this new life they have. Versus Twilight is like, no, this isn't right. I'm going to fix it because it failed the first time. We're gonna make sure. I'm gonna make sure it works this time. So it's there's a lot going on in this fic, and yeah, at this point it's already over almost sixty thousand words, and it's I don't know when it's going to end or whatever, but. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely quite the fic. Like, like you said, there's a lot going on, 
And yeah, there is a lot going on, but it's written really well. I definitely enjoyed it. it. The flow is well. The writing's good. Um, flow is good. I shouldn't say the flow is well. That's bad grammar. <gasps> ah. <laughs> you failed. You, you don't deserve They're to better read the rest at gra- of this. There's a reason I don't write. <laughs> you don't deserve to read the rest of this. Get out. Don't you don't deserve it. You don't deserve, it. you don't deserve it. No. It is a lot of fun. I am definitely enjoying this thing. One, I'm surprised you you featured a Twi Pie. Why? That's, that's... I used to like Twi Pie a lot. Oh, yeah, it's not one I one I, yeah, I, I featured because Mr. Seen... Numbers. Yeah, and I like it's definitely that, featured. That Twi Luna fic he wrote was really well done. So I was like, I read this. I'm like, yep, still good. <laughs> now it is T rated. Yeah, it's T rated. And... I want to oh, bring that up. It boy, really does pushes it, it. Push that T rated. Yeah, there's. There is... I was going to say this. There's a lot of Frank talks about sex. There's one whole chapter basically that really, really stretches the T rating. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's what part of the reason I was kind of hesitant for a while. That's why you notice that most of these chapters came out in September, and I didn't uh, yeah. feature till now when it's just kind of new chapters in December. I've been thinking I... about it off and on, like, do I feature, do I not? Because uh, largely because of that stuff, it really pushes it. There's a lot of Frank talks about sex, and they make it very obvious why and Pi- Pinky are having sex. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so th- it's. It's not explicit, but it is blatant. It's frank. It's very yeah, frank it, about it. Yeah. It, it doesn't it doesn't hide it behind a lot of well, there's innuendo, but it's more blatant innuendo innuendo. Yeah. It's not like trying to, you know, I guess prettify it or anything. It's like, yeah, it's a thing. It's yeah, just part of this right. world. And there's all, my only thing is my only fear is it'll one day I'll see it's been bumped up to M and I'll be like, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> That's my fear. Yeah. But, but at yeah. this point, it does it does retain. It doesn't like get into the nitty gritty. So yeah, to speak. it's like I said, it's not explicit. It doesn't show that kind of detail. But it does make you uncomfortable to just know that it's there. Like yeah, that. if that makes you uncomfortable for whatever reason. For whatever reason, there's plenty of reasons it might. Yeah, <laughs> just the idea of just two cartoon just, just horses. Content warning. <laughs> cartoon horses. Oh no. Yes. But yeah, it is. It, it does get into that a little bit, but um. It does reach, at least maintain its T rating, so just don't worry too much about it. If you're wor- if you don't want to read that, you don't. We won't be seeing that sort of thing. But yeah, it does. It's it doesn't hide it either. It is a part of the relationship, and that's just what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, if that doesn't bother you, I just highly recommend checking it out. Um, you I don't would... see Twipie very much anymore. It's kind of died off in the last couple of years. Yeah, because because Pinky's not a villain, so. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to ship villains. Uh, yeah, it, it's still a good read, and um, I'm interested to see where the story goes. And part of it's I'm interested is just because it seems like a good take on the what if with Nightmare Moon. It is. It it does seem like a really good take, and I am definitely interested to see where this goes as well. So I would also echo your recommendations. But as that's the only fanfic we've got, that's the end of hand content, and that is the end of this episode. So. Hope you liked what you heard. If you did, you can find all of our episodes, past, future, present, at tony411.libsyn.com. Remember that's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. So go there, find them all. There's RSS feed you subscribe to. All that sort of stuff is there. You can also find us on iTunes. Just search for us, 2411. Subscribe to us there. Give us five stars. It helps us. You can also find us on Stitcher, stitcher.com, or use the mobile apps. Just search for us. You know our name. We are also on Google Play, play play.google.com slash music, and then search for Pony411. We will be listed. We are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pony411. Find all of our episodes there. Subscribe to us and click the notification bell so you get immediately notified as soon as those go up. And leave us a comment, and we will read those (gasps) and potentially reply to them. Mm -hmm. We are also on Ponyville Live. With all the other shows that they have there, we are listed amongst them. We also air on Ponyville FM every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Tune in then or whenever because it's a great place to find good music. Lots of fandom music and and such, and including live DJs. So tune in to them. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can email us. We are pony411podcast at gmail.com. So send us comments, criticisms, suggestions. You just want to say hi, that kind of thing. Like... If you have something you want us to talk about, send it our way and we'll take a look. If you just want to ask us questions, a good place there too. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash 2401. Like our page there. We'll post updates when they happen. If you use Facebook, it's great there. 
We're also on Twitter, at Pony411. Follow us, tweet us. That's probably the best way for quick communications or just watch us talk about nonsense. Because that's what Twitter's for, nonsense. Heck yeah. Nonsense, yes. We are also, you can also follow our personal accounts on Twitter. I am at Alcatraz with a 7 and 7 T and an underscore at the end, and he is at Nemesis Prime 1. I haven't been using my Twitter account much lately. I don't use it much at all, but even more so this week, I've been rather busy with work stuff. I saw Bumblebee, and it was great. I've been hearing. It was genuinely great. So that's good. Yep. It is very good. Transformers is finally out of the Dark Ages. Transformers has always been ruined. Remember this. <laughs> Remember that. Transformers has been ruined forever since day one. Yep. No one hates Transformers more than Transformers fans. Exactly. So yes, that is the end of the episode. That's all we've got for you this week. Tune we'll in be- next year. <laughs> yeah, tune in next year. We'll be back in... In 2019, I guess. So you'll have to wait. You'll have to wait until next year in order to hear us again, Mm. which I guess is just in two weeks. So tune in then. We will figure something to talk about. Woo! Nemesis over here will figure out something to talk about. Yep. Always do. Yep. We always do. But again, until then, please pony responsibly. See ya. Goodbye. Goodbye.